I have given my Lord. What is the institution of marriage in the Indian context? In case of Hindus, what the Hindu scriptures say? In case of Muslims, what Holy Quran says? In case of Christians, what Holy Bible says? It's a social institution conferred with the legal status. And all these social institutions are predating the statutes and have accepted marriage as an institution only between heterosexual couples. And again, my Lord, we are not sitting in judgment over that decision. That's what the society has accepted since millions of years. Uh, Sudista, where are you referring to on this aspect? Well, look, page 4 to 15 of my submissions. Well, look, page 6 to 15, I'm sorry. Actually, your, even my Lord, your formulation is the best is best brought out in page 11. Yes, well, look. 44. Yeah, yes, well, look. Those four points. So may, I, may I just read, my Lord, for your, my Lord, so that it, I, I make myself more clear. The world religions have shaped the history of marriage and family and continue to form the basis of marriage as an essentially religious concept. While it is correct that there is significant divergence between different faiths and their practices in relation to marriage, what must not be lost sight of is that there is more convergence than conflict in teachings of mar teachings, marriage and family. All six marriage, a major world religions overlap on the following attributes of marriage as identity. Then I have given the source. First, each of these religious traditions confirms marriage as a vital and valuable institution and practice that lies at the heart of the family and at the foundation of broader society. Second, each tradition recognizes that marriage has inherent goods that lie beyond the preferences of the couple. One fundamental good of marriage emphasized by Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism and Confucianism is that the husband and wife complete each other. Indeed, they are transformed through marriage into a new person, a new one, fresh reality. Another fundamental good of marriage is the procreation and nature of children. Lord, this is not an archaic concept. Special Marriage Act uses the word procreation. Children are sacred gifts to a married couple who, who carry forth not only the family name, lineage and property, but also the community's religion, culture and language. All these religions thus see a close relation between marriage and children, just as they saw a close relation, although not an identity, between marriage and sexual expression. And all these religions teach that stable marriages and families are essential to the well-being of children. This is what Malot Kara says in the adoption. Two years of stable relationship as husband and wife. Third, each tradition regards marriage as a special form of sacrament, promise, oath or contract over any generic relationship, economic or social. It has a special unique status, Malot. For Hindus, it is a sacrament. For Muslims, it's a sacred contract. But nonetheless, a sacred contract. And across the faith, what is recognized as a marriage is between heterosexual couple. Malo. Fourth, each tradition eventually came to insist that marriage dependent in its essence on the mutual consent of the man and the woman. Even if the man and woman are represented by parents or guardians during the contract negotiations, their own consent is essential to the validity of their marriage. Jewish, Hindu, Confucian and Muslim writers came to this insight early in the development of marriage. The Christian tradition reached this insight canonically only in the 12th century and Buddhism more recently still. Fifth, marriage is a concept that is deeply embedded as a union between two opposite sexes ordained by the religious text and practices specifically for the furtherance of society and the orderly influence between persons inhabiting the society and following specific religions. Now your lordships have a variety of shades to be dealt with. 
variety of problems which are to be encountered, variety of religions and their personal laws, my lord, intermingling, and your lordships have an option on, in my oh. respectful submission, possibly the only constitutionally permissible option to require the parliament or to wait for the parliament to do that. My lord, please now come to page 16. My lord, I am citing some judgments, I will not read all, but these are, my lord, some very illuminating judgments, my lord, at page 17. My lord, write... 17. 17. It, it starts at 16. The title is Democratic Right of People to Regulate Themselves. Uh, you so said... Lord, yes, the society has a right to regulate ourselves. 17. Okay. Lord, PDF 25. 21. That's right. 21, my lord. Yes, PDF is 21, my lord. We as a society, my lord, govern who will be the components of that society, my lord, and that governance comes in, my lord, the elected representatives whom we decide, my lord, to elect. Now, please come, my lord, this Reynold Rajmani judgment. I will read only the highlighted part, my lord, so that I don't uh, invest your lordships more time. It cannot be denied that society is generally interested in maintaining the marriage bond and preserving the matrimonial state with a view to protecting societal stability, the family home, and the proper growth and happiness of children of the marriage. I'll skip the rest, underlined portion. But although the grounds for divorce have been liberalized, they nevertheless continue to form an exception to the general principle favoring the continuation of the marital tie. In our opinion, when a legislative provision specifies the grounds on which divorce may be granted, they constitute the only conditions on which the court has jurisdiction to grant divorce. If grounds need to be added to those already specifically set forth in the legislation, that is the business of the legislature and not of the courts. Lord, please Lord, see these Lord, in light of what I am going to show. The structure of the Special Marriage Act would be if it is redrafted the way petitioners have prayed for. Even their prayers are, my lord, absolutely vague. I'll, I'll be able to demonstrate that. But first, my lord, law on the point. Five. When therefore section 10 of the Indian Divorce Act specifically sets forth the grounds on which a marriage may be dissolved, additional grounds cannot be included by the judicial construction of some other section unless that section plainly intends so at the foot. However, whether a provision for divorce by mutual consent should be included in the Indian Divorce Act is a matter of legislative policy. The courts cannot extend or enlarge legislative policy by adding a provision to the statute which was never enacted there. Therefore, I started by saying that marriage is a socio-legal institution its recognition is a matter of legislative policy. Then, my lord, Keshwanan Bharti, my lord, kindly allow me to read, my lord, this would guide, my lord, us throughout, my lord, the hearing of this case. How we construe the constitution in the context of the marriage being given the recognition, my lord. Underline portion. It cannot be denied that provisions of the constitution of other countries are designed for the political, social and economic outlook of the people of those countries for whom they have been framed. The seed of the constitution is sown in a particular soil and it is the nature and the quality of the soil and the climatic conditions prevalent there which will ensure its growth and determine the benefits which it confers on its people. We cannot plant the same seed in a different climate and in a different soil and expect the same growth and the same benefit therefrom. Law varies according to the requirements of time and place. Justice thus becomes a relative concept varying from society to society according to the social milieu and economic conditions prevailing therein. The problems which conferred confront those courts in the background of the state of the society, the social and economic setup, the requirements of people with a totally different ethics, philosophy, temperament and outlook, differentiate them from the problems and outlook which confront the courts in this country. 
it is not a case of shuttling out shutting out light where they could profitably enlighten the ben and benefit us the concern is rather to safeguard against the possibility of being blinded by it Lord, this takes us to my Lord, the theory that ultimately societal acceptance is one of the considerations for recognition of any union. And that can be tested only in the legislature. And my Lord, there is a beautiful passage I'll read my Lord, from the American Supreme Court which says, that any recognition by the court does more harm to LGBTQ plus community than help them. Because then you are forcing something which should have come from within. That's the logic, my lord, of the Honorable Supreme Court. Now, my lord, A.K. Roy, my lord, five judge bench. I'll read, my lord, the highlighted part. But we cannot transplant in the Indian context and conditions principles which took birth in other soils without a careful examination of their relevance to the interpretation of our constitution. No two constitutions are alike, for it is not mere words that make a constitution. It is the history of the people which lends color and meaning to its constitution. Lord, we cannot forget the historical background and the anthropological background, my Lord, which eventually resulted into creation of an institution called marriage across faiths across religion now my lord your lordships have seen but my lord justice cardozo my lord a little hard hitting uh, my lord word but my lord it it really my lord uh, i i would wish my lord to place it when they say that we all we know want is a recognition all we want is the confirmation of our right the judge even when he is free is still not wholly free he is not to innovate at pleasure he is not a knight errant roaming at will in it's pursuit of his own process. idea of beauty. I'm sorry. It's the nature of the judicial process. Okay. So that, that, that's correct. That's correct, Malod. But Malod, uh, only a few words I wanted to highlight, Malod. Uh, not, not the first part, which is slightly, Malod, uh, uh, a little more harsher, Malod. But thereafter, he is to draw his inspiration from the consecrated principles. And this is important. He is not to yield to spasmodic sentiment, to vague and unregulated benevolence. That's what my Lord, I am driving it. The class at with which my Lord, your lordships are dealing is an unidentifiable class. They have their class specific problems. It would be completely, my Lord, a vague declaration, if at all it is to be made, without, my Lord, conceiving the problems they would be creating, my Lord, the mere declaration would con continue. He is to exercise a discretion informed by tradition, methodized by analogy, disciplined by system, and subordinate to the primordial necessity primordial. of primordial. order in the social life. Primordial. 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 